Hey everybody, today Rado talks through Galaxy Trucker the Missions expansion, which is the latest expansion for the awesome, excellent Galaxy Trucker. Today I'll be telling you what's new in the box, how it changes the core game, but I won't be actually doing a run through. If you want, you can hit the eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes to go to a run through I filmed a couple of years ago that not only demonstrated how Galaxy Trucker works and was played with Jen. Jen and I competed as we played. And uh, spoiler alert, Jen completely crushed me, although it turns out she was cheating. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to talk through the new content, assuming you know how Galaxy Trucker already plays. So what's in the little box? Basically, a whole bunch of new ship component tiles, some new adventure cards, and mission cards. So how does this work? Well, the main thing that we do is, with this game, we add obje story-based objectives to our gameplay while playing Galaxy Trucker. So what you do is, uh, well, first of all, the first interesting thing is, for starters, you don't always just go straight to a level one ship for your first round and then a level two ship for your second round and so on. Before you even start doing anything, players agree as a group if they want to just skip directly to level three or level four ships. Uh, you don't have to kind of work your way up. Everybody agrees. You start, let's say we're going to start with level two ships this time, and we're going to do a level two and another level two, and we're going to do a short game. Two missions each at level two. Uh, instead of just sticking to the traditional level one, two, three escalation. Then everybody starts with 20 space bucks ahead of time. We don't start broke. Uh, the game assumes we're already experienced skip captains and we've got some money lying around. So everybody starts with a little bit of cash on hand. Then after they've chosen the, the structure of the session you're going to have, for the first run, you draw three mission cards and the players are going to pick one. In this case, it could be radioactive isotopes, carpool, or riding a powder keg. And now, these are going to create new, and you, know, and you can see, there's a whole bunch of them. There's 16. There's all kinds of really interesting, sometimes quite kooky, uh, missions you can go on. Uh, this is hauling radioactive isotopes, carpooling, or riding the powder keg. And right off the bat, they, they give you a, a character is basically hiring you to do a mission. you got to have a little bit of a story about what they're trying to do. And then there are special setup and gameplay rules you'll have to follow. So uh, let's say, let's see. The interesting thing about the carpool is, it introduces special adventures. The radioactive isotopes introduces the radioactive cargo you have to carry. And riding the powder keg, this is a tougher one because it introduces the special missions or the special adventure cards and the explosive cargo. So what the heck, let's say we're really super experienced <laughs> captains at Galaxy Trucker. We want a super challenge. Th of these three, these are going to be a little bit easier. This is going to be the toughest one. Let's say, as a group of players, we're all really good, we choose this one. Although, uh, if players can't agree on which one they're going to choose, they basically just ch pick one randomly. But anyway, let's go on ahead and say I do the powder cake because it lets me show you a little bit more stuff. So these other ones, they're out. And the first of our session, our missions, is going to be this one. And then for the second mission, after we finish the first, however it happens, we draw three more and we pick, hey, club gold trials, the bet, or heavy duty, and so on. So every time you play, you're going to get a different combination of interesting special rules that really change it up. So we chose powder cake. What does that mean? Well, hey, buddy, I've got a challenge for you. Don't worry. It's fun. Kind of. This is going to be a nasty one. So... As part of setup, we are the game comes with all these different special cargo tiles. We are, for riding the powder cake, supposed to pull out all of the explosive ones. Ba, ba, ba. Let's see. I'll take all of them. And you can see, you know, like, like a regular one, they, they come in different uh, configurations in terms of how they connect to other stuff. Let's see, there's a few more here. Do I got them all? I think I've got them all. Right, okay. Let's move all the rest out. If we were, if, like I said, if we'd played that isotope one, we would have pulled out all the radioactive stuff. But instead, we pull out all the explosives for riding the powder keg, and we take them and we mix them in with the rest of the stuff in the scrap heap. And you can see right off the bat, they're purple backed. It's not like you're going to be surprised. You know exactly where these are when you're going digging for the pieces you want. Although, of course, you don't know which one is which if you're looking for, you know, the perfect shaped piece or whatever. So anyway, so these all get mixed in. 
And also as part of setup, we are supposed to, you know, like always, make our little collection of adventure cards, but we are going to add the S adventures. Now, these are super tough. These are really, really nasty cards that will rip you apart. They are so tough, in fact, that the rules go out of their way to say that, hey, if you're the type of player who spends most of their time just building the ship and you never really look to see what's coming, you need to look at these the game rule, uh, because if you don't, if you're not prepared for these, they'll really wipe you out. And so in writing, and, and you'll, these get introduced to the game in different ways, in different missions. In this mission, what we're supposed to do is, we, we have our three preview decks. We're supposed to take the level ones out of the preview decks and put these in instead. So let's see, we're playing a level two. Normally we'd have a 2-2-1. Two, two, instead, a given stack is going to have a 2-2-S. Two, two, and of course, while you're building, somebody can take a look and say, oh, hey, we're going to have pirates, we're going to have a meteor swarm, and we're going to have a black hole. Like I said, these S's are very nasty. They will utterly decimate you if you do not prepare for them. What's the black hole do? Well, it depends on what level the ship is. Remember, we're doing a level two ship, so the black hole says, hey, if you're doing level two ships, when you get here, you have to have a total thrust of seven. If you don't, you are sucked into the black hole and lost forever. You die. You don't make it across the finish line. You lose everything. So. You need to know this is here. And of course, if you're playing a level 3 or a level 4 ship, you need 8 or 9 thrust, or only 5 thrust as level 1 ship. So, those brown aliens, you better get some of them on board. You better get some double um, rocket booster packs and whatnot to be able to deal with this. Now, there is kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card. If you get to the black hole and you don't quite have enough thrust, the rules talk about how you have the option to jettison cargo to give yourself a little bit of extra thrust to be able to make it through. And you need to. Like I said, these S's are nasty. It was a black hole, but you know what? It could could have been a meteor shower. Look at this thing. What this is saying is um, it's only small meteors, no big meteors, but every single space without exception on the board will get hit, in this case, from the bow and the port. So it, you need to know this is coming because you've got to make sure you batten all your hatches or that you have a shield that's got plenty of batteries that's going to face in this direction because this will wipe you out. This will just rip, this will completely shred an unprepared ship that's got a few um, you know, bad connectors on the edges. So you need to know that's coming. Or it could be a meteor alert. This is an interesting one too. This is big meteors, not small meteors. And you'll notice one comes from starboard, one comes from you know frontal. And if you're playing a level two, hey, another one comes from starboard. If you're playing level three, they come from starboard and frontal. So there's more and more of them. And you'll notice uh, normally when big meteors come, you roll the dice, you add them together. That says where they come in. You have a chance of just getting missed. You know, like two, a five and a six, that's going to miss your ship entirely. But in this case. When this one's coming, you only roll one die and add it to a three. So that means it's a four to a nine, which means it's all but guaranteed going to hit your ship with a big, gigantic meteor. So these will also completely wipe you out. Here's another meteor shower. Uh, oh, tactical zones. These ones, um, basically, they're kind of like the old battle zones, but you uh, it, it's not just who has the, the least thrust, who has the least... A crew who has at least guns. It's a combination of the two. Basically, for this tactical zone, you take how much crew you have, subtract how much guns you have from that, and then whoever has the smallest result of that little equation is the one who gets hit by one, two, three, or all four of these, again, depending on what uh, level you're at. So, you know, there's another meteor shower. So these are all just super duper nasty stuff, including um, versions of the Predator Commando stuff, the Robo Police Raid, where, I mean, really nasty stuff will just rip you apart from the inside or or plague each occupied cabin on one of the eight um, right basically don't put cabins next to each other because plague will spread or radiation burst don't put batteries next to each other so you need to know this stuff so um, in the case of writing the powder cake there would be three specials that are going to come, and you'd really have to be prepared for all three of those things. Now, but that's not all. Remember, there are we can see that there's the special cargo in here. In this case, it's explosive cargo. The rules are, hey, um, there's an extra rule. Before the flight, the player who has the fewest explosives is marked as chicken. Um, which is going to have an impact on final scoring. And let's see, uh, if, but if multiple players are tied for fewest, no one's the chicken. And so there are bonus points to be had for making it to the end. Whoever has the most explosive cargo at the end of the 
of the, the trucking run can score 8, 12, 16, or 20 bucks, depending on whether it was a level one, two, three, or four ship. Uh, mission. So it's a lot of points to be had. So you're again in a game of chicken where you're paying attention. Okay, well, heck, I put two. Hopefully, oh no, she put two. All right, do I put a third one on? I don't know. Do I put a fourth one on? Because here's the, here's how these things work. If this piece gets destroyed, it, it you know it gets removed, and every piece around it also gets removed because the explosion is so huge. If there are two of these next to each other, they can create a chain reaction of explosions that could take out half your ship. So this is very dangerous cargo to carry. But riding the powder keg, you're playing a game of chicken. Who's going to carry the most of this? Who's actually going to be alive at the end to actually cross the finish line? So that's it. just one example of the different missions that radically changes stuff. You have these super terrifying special uh, adventures that will happen and you're carrying ridiculously dangerous cargo that means this is a very very high risk and high reward mission much more so than you would ever experience under normal circumstances and then we come back to it's interesting these these missions can be so challenging remember how I said it starts you start with 20 bucks so yeah, you know, the game's fully expecting you're going to go into the hole big time on some of these missions they're very challenging it's interesting um, the game goes out of the way to say that at the end, whoever reaches the end with more than 20 credits wins. As usual, some players will be bigger winners than other, but you know, they're just trying to say, hey, you know what, if you can just break even, that's considered a victory because these things can be so challenging. But anyway, that's just one of the new types of cargo, the explosive cargo. There are missions having, like an isotope one, with a radioactive cargo. The way this stuff works is you put this in your ship and in next to it, you can never have, well, actually, you can have crew and battery quarters. You know, if I can find a battery, I'm never going to find one here. You guys know what a battery looks like. Yep. Apparently, I don't have any. My goodness. Okay. Now it's a mission. I'm going to find some batteries. Nope. I'm going to search every one of these things until I find some batteries. Uh, there we go. So you can have batteries next to a radioactive space, but all eight spaces around the radioactive, the crew quarters and batteries are empty. They are useless because you can't put functional batteries. So these just become structural pieces, you know, and so that could actually become a uh, tricky consideration. Where do you put these? Because that's severely limiting how much crew and batteries you're going to have. The more of these you take, that's what the radioactive pieces do. Then you've got the fragile cargo. The way these work, they're kind of the opposite of the explosive cargo. Uh, basically, if uh, you know if you if you're trying to haul as much of these as possible, and you've got some stuff next to it, if a piece next uh, if this piece gets destroyed, um, the fragile gets destroyed as well. Fragile gets destroyed whenever an adjacent piece gets destroyed. So they'll go quick. But if you've got a mission that wants you to carry a lot of these. Well, you're going to take that extra risk. Let's see here. What are the other ones? Oh, there is, there's the heavy cargo that has different weights. The more of this you carry, the more the overall mass of your ship is. And what that does is it reduces your overall thrust. So if you're carrying this, you need to have, I mean, you need to have seven thrusts just to break even. And that's huge. But of course, there'll be missions that say, hey, carry a lot of heavy cargo. Um, if, but if you're going to try to get across open space, you better have a lot of thrust when you're messing with these things. Although it's interesting, what, all of these things are bad. They, you know, there's nothing good about them. They'll explode. They're fragile. They break. They limit what you can do. These things at least have one good, which is um, the, the, uh, the, so the non- Connector sides are considered to be indestructible, which remember was introduced in one of the expansions. So they're indestructible. So nothing, you know, heavy laser fire, heavy meteors will not hurt them on the sides, but they weigh you down big time and can, you know, if you don't have enough thrust, you'll never make it, you'll never make it home. Let's see, what's the other one? There's, uh, oh, oh, yeah, curses. So you've got these cursed artifacts, uh, alien artifacts you put on your ship. There's either two direction or four direction ones. What these do is you put them in the ship and every piece, every tile along this line does not function. Shields don't generate shields. Weapons don't shoot. Crew and batteries 
uh, don't hold crew and batteries, uh, everything. So you basically just got this, you know, a major portion of your ship, depending on how you lay this out, will just be completely offline to carry these. These ones are even tougher because heck, it's everything in the row and the column, the, the row and the column. So these make a very, very interesting and challenging jigsaw puzzle to try to figure out if you take a special mission that has you taking the cursed artifacts. That's all of them, right? You've got the radioactive, the heavy load, the explosive stuff, the fragile stuff, and the artifacts. And 16 missions, each one with radical, sometimes simple, sometimes very radical different rules that fundamentally change things up, and a deck of the nastiest, scariest stuff you are ever going to run into in Galaxy Truckers. And that's it, folks. That's what you get with Galaxy Trucker missions. So, I gotta say, just your final thoughts, this is awesome. It's another cool, must-have expansion. Although it's interesting, these S cards are so nasty. Um, they really are, I think, only applicable. Only seasoned Galaxy Truckers would really want to play with these. But that's why it's so beautiful. I mean, there are, let's see, um, there's a lot of these. Okay, this doesn't take uh, S cards. This one doesn't take S cards. Doesn't take S cards. Uh, it's just like a little reminder of what the new features are in each one of them. So there are, if, if you're not a super experienced high level Galaxy Trucker, you've got plenty of missions that won't introduce the really super terrible, nasty, unbeatable things. And so you can have some of these easier missions. I think that's really, really nice that the game has that flexibility for all player levels. And it's just really, really cool. The, the humor, the variety, um, you're, you know, it, it makes every game you're going to play even more different. There's more flexibility, more variety. And it just makes Galaxy Trucker that much better. It's another must-have expansion. And it's interesting. The background of this is... Galaxy Trucker was uh, last year released on iOS and Android as a really, really awesome little portable game you can play on your smartphone. And it got a lot of awards. It was really well received. And when they made the video game version of Galaxy Trucker, they created all these storyline missions because a video game needs a storyline. They, th um, they were so cool, these storyline missions, that um, the, the CGE and Vlad Shavala decided, hey, you know what? Let's bring all that stuff back into the board game. And so this is an interesting thing where a board game inspired the design of a video game, and now, come back around full circle, the video game has inspired the expansion for the board game. It's absolutely lovely. It's absolutely awesome. And if you're a Galaxy Trucker fan, you got to get it. doesn't matter whether you're a, a really seasoned one or a novice. There's going to be something cool and fun and uh, entertaining in this box. And that's it, folks. That's Galaxy Trucker Missions. Thanks for watching. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, always please let me know. Otherwise, hope you have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Keep on trucking. Bye-bye.